No, John's down there. All right, I do have the lineup. So, uh, Rootstown beat Manchester 53-15. Kirtland beat Gerard 41-33. Okay, we're gonna have Brad Williamson, Brendan Williamson, Gerard, or Kirtland versus Dalton Leitner, Rootstown. Leitner got beat by Bailey from Manchester. Oh. Okay. Uh, Kirtland starts out with a forfeit. Wow. Richtown's bouncing their lineup. Uh, obviously, this is Leitner, right? Okay. Yeah. Leitner versus Pedersen. Uh, 113. Rich, uh, Kirtland up 6 nothing on the duel. Richtown gives up the forfeit. They did bump their kids up uh, last. Uh, oh. Harris. Uh, that, they're saying they just not, he just announced Harris versus Patterson. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, he's on the way in sheet. You're right. He's up on the wall too. Yeah. Uh, Harris was. Well, yeah. There's two for Richtown. I don't know what's going on here. Then uh, no Lightner. Uh, maybe he got uh, hurt. Well, they're all important matches here. Kirtland up 6 nothing. Uh, Mike Pedersen for Kirtland. You now these matches with these unheralded wrestlers, not uh, not the stars, district placers, state qualifiers. They're the ones that are important in these dual meets. They're 113 pounds. Kirtland up 6-0 in the duel. 5-0 in the match. Or no, Richtown up 5-0. We got uh, Devin Harris, Richtown versus Mike Pedersen. Uh, all I can think is Leitner from Richtown got injured and his loss to Bailey from Manchester. He lost 9-4. This I, I still think this is going to be a barn burner of a duel. Kirtland has some tough kids. Rootstown's real tough in their lower weight. Record. These matches will be up probably tomorrow night on uh, video on demand. We're going to be at Crestwood tomorrow night. Crestwood, Willoughby, South, Nordonia, and Rootstown. We have another match, uh, it's eluding me now, but then uh, we're doing a PTC tournament, probably the St. Vincent St. Mary sectional, the Alliance District. Eight to nothing out of our score, Harris over Patterson. I'm just wondering if they're, nah, they're not going to move uh, Leitner up to 19 or 20. Uh-oh. Up 8 to nothing, Harris. 
almost in the head and arm, and he got that leg hook. That's saving him. Uh, Pedersen. He does still have the head and arm, but he's not getting anything yet. He's got to get that leg out. Close. Harris gets his head out. Now he's getting his own point. <coughs> all right, we're going to piece up in the major decision. Richtown needs to get all these uh, bonus points they can, and especially in this match. We don't, well, it wouldn't matter to me. Uh, we had a heck of a finish last week. We're at 11 nothing, start of the third. Six to nothing, our dual meet score. Kirtland gets a forfeit at 106. Some notes of interest to you wrestling fans out there while this match is going on. Mike Calvert for Kirtland wrestled his first match to 132. Tough Mike Kurt, Mike Calvert. Uh, might make a difference in this. He's returned. Uh, let me look at my notes here. Another note for Kirtland. Clayton Davidson, the 160 pound returning state qualifier. He's got his 151st win. 150 and 151 here tonight. I'm hoping for a matchup with him against Saboro for Rootstown. I, I, uh, it's almost like I choke on his name. <laughs> and I catch heck from these Rootstown guys I'm working with. I'm hoping that uh, he bumps up, but we'll see how the duel is playing out. But that's going to could be an important match up here. We're at 14 nothing, 30 seconds to go. The Rootstown coach is wanting this tech fall here from uh, Harris. That could be an important point. Ten seconds to go. Oh, there it is. There it is. There's a tech ball. Seventeen to nothing. Harris. That makes it uh, five to six. Our dual meet score. You know, like last week, uh, if uh, Pellucci got a tech fall. If it, the worst would have happened for Richtown and their heavyweight suffered a pin, it would have tied the match and not put uh, independence to win the match. Okay, we got Trescott. Now that uh, the gym's quieted down, some we have an announcer, and we definitely know who the wrestlers are. That help makes it easier on me. The winner of this school meet will be in Columbus next weekend.
Jeff Scott looking for a fall. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Rootstown needs to get all they can because Kirtland's going to come back in this old meet. Makes it 11 to 6. One thirty two is going to be a heck of a matchup now, too. Kirtland uh, giving up a forfeit at least one, probably two. They give up two in the last match. Colucci getting a little excited there, I guess. Andonian's a tough kid. Colucci, the returning state qualifier. This is where this town needs to not just get the win. But they need to try and get bonus. Eleven to six, our dual score. I was surprised that uh, Ritzon gave up the forfeit at one oh six. I was looking forward to that matchup. Something must have happened, yep. Uh, Whitener got beat uh, by Bailey from Manchester 9 to 4, and he must have tweaked something. I don't see him just not wrestling. Lucci trying to get back, and there he gets a turn. Got it in deep now, Plucci does. And don't even fight him. Well, he's got, he's got to watch that. He's already been called for one on that sort of roughness. He doesn't need to get another one to get, get in trouble with the DQ. Or, thought we would hear some news from St. V uh, by now, but... We did, and I'm figuring that uh, actually, in my opinion, they were going to win, win uh, beat Norton, and I think they, uh, on paper, and at least on my paper, I had them uh, beating Perry pretty handily, but not on some others. There's a good Gramby roll by Pellucci. He gets the two right into a cradle. Richtown had they came to they came to head hunting tonight. I should tell you that he's got that cradle in, he's getting back points, he's up seven to one plooch he is. Now I looked at this door on paper with uh, but Richtown's bumped all their wrestlers up a weight, which changes things. I looked at it several times and it all came down to about 31-31. But I wasn't counting on a lot of bonus points. I, get, I, I was given some. But uh, that's why they wrestled on the match. Us prognosticators can do all... We can do all we want on paper, but these kids are the ones that do it. 
my heart goes out to all of them. I, I appreciate all the work they put in, the sweat, the bump, cutting weight. That's from the state champions all the way down to the kid who only wins one or two matches. They all work just as hard. And they all deserve a little bit of our respect. We wouldn't be here without them. Lucci really, really head hunting. He's got 20 seconds to go in the second period. He's up 10 to 1. Getting back again. Andonian not wanting to give up that 10. It's going to be close now. The ref's out of position a little. He's there now. It's going to be 13 to 1. Kirtland brought a good crowd here tonight. Nasty weather. Everyone be careful on the way home. You guys, if you're watching, are probably at home, unless you're on your phone. I, you know, I forget that we do have this technology now. We got the cell phones, the iPads. We go out on all those, don't we, Jim? Yep. Tomorrow night, we'll be at Crestwood. There's an injury timeout for Andonian. Blake Andonian, sophomore from Kirtland. Doing everything he can not to get pinned. We'll save another team point if he can not give up the stick at uh, Crestwood. Or Richtown got uh, a fall at 120, or a fall at 120. And a tech fall at 113. Harris, tech fall to Peterson. For Pedersen and Truscott pinned John Key. Yeah, the record courier's not here. They're probably at Crestwood. Ravenna, Ravenna and Crestwood, they're five PTC teams wrestling tonight. Wow. League, league had a good year. Wood, Woodridge and Crestwood actually wrestle, wrestled in their first match. Ravenna and Perry. Ooh. Thirteen to one to our score here. Minute forty to go. Fifteen to one. Fifty seconds to go, third period, fifteen to one. Roof down up eleven to six on our door meet. They got a pin and a fall, a tech fall. There's the back point, so at least be attacked. Forty seconds. He it's either gonna be over or he's gonna get a pin. A lot of fight in Blake Andonian. Wow, he's got that half sunk deep now. Nope, he's gonna. All right, 18 to one is gonna be our final score. Pellucci over Andonian. That's gonna make it 16 to six. Gonna have this is gonna be a good match here, Hayes and Calvert. This should Calvert uh, just come back from injury that he wrestled his first match of the year against Gerard and he won by fall. This is one that uh, 
Actually, that's a match. Rich on the Nice outside single for Hey. He gets no points yet. But there it is. Uh, Talbot smartly let him get it. He was getting in precariously close to getting a half thrown on him. Hayes up a weight. Rootstown, all Rootstown's kids are up a weight in these weights. Up to Saddle. And, well, gives the reversal for Calvert. Ties it up. A minute 20 to go first period. Deemer for uh, Kirtland wrestled his first match at 220 tonight and looked good pinning Stewart from Girard. Uh, that uh, reporter for the Willoughby South News Herald that I talked to said he cut down from two, he came in at 256 the start of the wrestling season from football. Tied up at two, 51 seconds to go. First period, this is gonna be a good match here. Could be one that decides the duel. I did one counting on Calvert. He, like I say, just came back from injury, I guess. And I have this as being a very, very close duel. Almost got back points, Calvert did. Calvert tweaked his knee there. Yeah, I uh, subscribed that Willoughby South. So I got a lot of Kirtland results this year and I've been impressed with them. The switch try for Hayes. There's a lot of movement. Uh-oh, he's got a cradle lock in. Now Hayes still fighting. Hayes gets a reversal. Four to two. Hayes over Calvert. Now, stamina might come into play here with Calvert just coming back. And Hayes has a cradle lock in and gets it. And boy, he's close to getting the fall. It's close. Oh, wow. It's going to be five, seven to two. Now, that's big. Two very good wrestlers here. Someone left the Milky Way here for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was saying here. Uh, seven to two our score. Sixteen to six our dual meet score. Rootstown over Kirtland. Uh, Kirtland's only points being a forfeit at 106. Harris for Rootstown beat Techfold Pedersen or Peterson. For Kirtland, 17 to nothing. Trescott got a pin over John Key. Pellucci a tech fall, 18 to one over Andonian. And Hayes right now up seven to two over Calvert. Ah, uh, the, the lower part of this Rootstown lineup is strong. He's got that cradle locked up again. But Calvert's got the leg. There we go. Uh, Uh-oh. Now. Ah, boy. Calvert fighting. We got two back. Ow. Ah, that's what I was afraid of. Calvert gets a head and arm. But there, he still doesn't have it. Uh, now it's uh, nine to four. They, he's still... Uh, Hayes is still in control. There now, Calvert gets the reversal, making it, it should be nine to five. A nine to six is what I got the score to be. They didn't give uh, the back point on the floor to, uh, Hayes gets a reversal. Now I have it at 11 to 6. The scoreboard says 9. The referee did signal two back points. 
for Hayes that never got up on the board. We'll see if uh, the Rootstown coaches dispute this. Yeah, they're going to. Uh, and they're going to be right. I saw it. We got it on camera. That's right. I'm sure we do. If they want a quick. We need to get the Jimbotron up there. <laughs> we do have uh, anyone out there wants us to bring it. We got a big. We got portable devices that we can set up for our webcast to be on a big screen. Right. What's the What's the Jimbotron? How big is that? Ten by twenty. 10 by 20, which could be out in the hallway or up on the, you know, we could have that going on with, with exactly what you guys are seeing. Okay, they're not giving him the back points. Not, and actually, they're giving him one point. Oh, they escaped 9 to 7 now. Hayes in on a quick double leg. Boy, I saw him count the back, but... Uh, oh, they took it back. They, yeah, they did. Now they're, now they're saying 10 to 6. <laughs> well, I had it at 11 to 6. Oh well. We got some good scrambles in this match. Hayes in on a double. Calvert trying to block it. Hayes gets a two. He, uh, and for these Richtown kids to be bumping up a weight against quality wrestlers like uh, Kirtland have in doing this, I'm impressed with them. They're getting ready for this uh, sectional district and state. We may be at Rootstown for the sectional. Yep. I do know, I've seen online, St. V's is going to a uh, one-day sectional, and I have heard they want to do it on Friday. Now, starting at 1 o'clock, uh, a 12-team sectional can be done. Yep. The state has in incorporated some tie-break rules. You're only allowed five matches in a day. There would be six in certain situations. It would only be for the the fifth and the the fifth and sixth place match, and every once in a while a third and fourth. The third and fourth is still going to be at districts, but it does make change the placement on the bracket. And it even comes down to a coin flip. Uh, they have it. It's in the. It's on the Yappy site. I know the Yappy Yappy dot com wrestling site and the OHSAA site. Twelve to six now. Our score: twenty seconds to go. Looks like Hayes is going to get this match from Calvert. But uh, I was thinking that conditioning might come into effect in this match with Hayes just coming back. It's hard to get into wrestling shape when you're not on the mat. Calvert will be ready come sectional time, though. Kirtland will be at a different sectional than Rootstown. All right, 12 six. Makes it uh, 19 to six, our dual score. Okay, uh, are we gonna have Francis and Sadler here? No. It looks like uh, I don't know. Well, this is Francis, state qualifier. This has to be Jenkins. Wow. Well, Rootstown's coaches now are no, they know that, uh, they know that they'll probably even out the point differential with Sadler. Oh, Sadler's got to get his win at 45. Well, Jenkins not getting it up. He almost gets pancaked into getting a leg. <clears throat> no, I really thought... That was one of the matches I was looking forward to maybe seeing, but dual meet the coaches are going to bump, bump their kids up. 
bump them around. I wanted, you know, Francis and Sadler would have been a good one. We're going to get uh, this is Francis and Jenkins, so we're probably going to get Brown and Sadler. Yeah, they're gonna they're not gonna not wrestle that. I tell you. No Jenkins giving up back points. Seven to one already our score. Rootstown coaches electing to wrestle Sadler. Jason Sadler up at 45. Well, and uh, I think Gerard bumped up uh, Morgan. Everyone stayed away from Francis today. He is a returning state qualifier. You got to do what you can do to maximize your points in the team system here. Nine to one now. It's going to be at least eleven. Yep, we got that. It's going to be end of first period. Eleven to one. Actually, if Francis can uh, just give up a tech. He's get uh, saving a team point. You did you want that? Nope. You want the five hot dog? We're kind of eating dinner on the run here. At least we're not. We're not. Yeah, this thanks to Richtown coach Craig Wise. You got the pen. Well, the freshman from Ruthstown got trial by fire there. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Brown. Brown and Sadler. But Brown's a good wrestler in his own right. Brown's definitely the bigger wrestler. Now, Sadler's got a mean streak in him. We'll see if he can do it even against a bigger, stronger kid. Because we know he's got a mean streak in him. From what I've seen, no. Uh, I'm pretty much a D2 guy, at least this year. Root or, but uh, I do see a lot of these uh, D3 results. And, uh, oh, there's a cradle for Sadler. The Brown could be one of those periphery guys. There's a pin, first period pin. Sadler went at it. Well, it worked. Worked for what Wise wanted to do. Yep. Rip Town's coach, they, they swapped pins at 38 and 45. 25 to 12. We'll see. 25 to 12 is our dual score. Kenneth, Sakinas. Back in the head. On paper, uh, Kirtland has, should have the advantage here. Rootstown. Rootstown needs to try to not give up bonus points in these matches. A quick two for 
Sak Sakin Sakinev. Sorry if I get my pronunciation wrong. 25 to 12, our dual meet score. Grittstown over Kirtland. Got Zerzolo for Grittstown. Down two to nothing a minute ago, first period. Our scoring so far has went. Williamson with a forfeit for Kirtland. Harris for Richtown, 17 to nothing. Tech ball over Peterson. Prescott from Richtown, a pin over John Key for, from Kirtland. Pellucci from Richtown, 18 to 1 over Andonian. Hayes, 12 to 6 over Calvert. Hayes from Richtown over Mike Calvert, who's back for Kirtland. Francis gets a fall for Kirtland over Jenkins from Richtown. Sadler gets a fall over Brown. And it puts us at 25 to 12 or two to nothing, 152 pounds. We had, a, we had a barn burner last week coming down right to the last match. Richtown ended up winning a close 38-36 duel over Independence. And I, Jim, I was looking through the papers just, just two weeks ago. Independence beat Kirtland 36-34 in a duel. And that came down to the, if, I'm pretty sure they started at 106, and it came down to the heavyweight match, which Dealey from Independence, who did win last week, won in overtime over uh, Independence heavyweight. Uh-oh. Well, there's almost there's four to nothing to score here. Second is over Zervolo. Zervolo. Oh, that's it. Like Zorro. Four to one now. Second period. Now, uh, this is actually a match. For, if you're a Kirtland fan, they want bonus here. Bonus or pen. Any kind of bonus points, but uh, <coughs> six to one. <coughs> now, sometimes uh, in a regular dual meet format, in a non-league dual meet, the coaches might want to try to get the best matchups, just like uh, Davidson at 160 for Kirtland, bumping up to 170 to wrestle Saboro. Oh, there we go. Bear hug, is he gonna get the two? I know uh, Bergelow hit the ground hard, he looks hurt. He's fighting. Yeah. 25-18, everyone here knows All right, now, anyway, getting back to, this is Davidson. All right, they're sending Davidson out at 160, so we're not gonna, but I don't blame Kirtland's coach. This is a dual meet with the team moving on next week. Us as fans like to see the the big matchups. I would have loved to have seen Davidson and Saboro. But Kirtland trying to get on to next week. They're down 25 to 18 right now. Davidson up two to one. He gets we got here. Uh, three to one now. I don't know what happened. Hand to the face or yeah, something. 
Davidson definitely looking for a pen here. The Kirtland fans are pretty knowledgeable wrestling fans. They know what's going on, too. Uh, they give up two forfeits at 70 and 82, so actually it's 37-18. They need to win all these next matches. Just like last week when Richtown had to avoid the pen. Uh, we've got the half in. We've got the cradle in, my bad. And he's got it in deep. And... Boy, there's the pen. First period fall for Davidson. 25-24. Okay, now it's not going to matter what they do, so Saboro's going to get a forfeit. And at 82, I'm sure they're going to send someone out there. Gretz, probably. Either Gretz or. Yep, Wingard. Well, they can do this. Uh, Gretz is going to probably jump up to. Uh, yeah. All right, that makes it 36-24, 37-24. 13-point lead, three matches to go. Decisions in them all. And if, if Turtle wins by decision in them all, Roostown wins by a point. Oh, there's a... Uh, Porter hits a bear hug right off the bat. Grit tries to roll through. Oh boy. Grit's on his back. Grit's fight. And they uh, give the takedown in a. No. Now, five to one now. Okay, he did get back points. And he, he cranks that throw right back up. Gretz trying to roll through it. Seven to one. They uh, don't want to give up even bonus points. Seven to two. Porter definitely trying to throw. Gretz giving up the weight. Down seven to two. 37, 34, 24, our dual meet score. A shot for Grant, and two. Just like last week, Rovers are hoping one of these, one of their last three guys steps it up. A pin right here would win the match for the Rovers. Uh, even I'd win here, four, eight to four. They're up by 13. Another double for Gret. He needs a drive. Porter sprawled. Ah, oh, boy, right at the buzzer, 10 to 4. Give him the two. Both referees confer and it's mutual. 10 to four, second period. Like I say, 37-24. Uh, Richtown down by 13, up by 13. 10 to five. Porter's gonna try to tie up and get a throw. He's done it. Uh, Gretz has actually been in on some nice doubles. He's just given up too much weight and strength. Uh-oh. Wow. This could be the dual meet right here. His arm's in the way. The 
His arm's in the way for the pin, but he can just hold him. Well, it's going to be tied. He's got them arms tied up. The Kirtland guy's pretty helpless. He's got both arms tied up like that. He's doing the right thing. Got 50 sec, 45. This could be the match right here. Wow, wow, hit boy, that the Kirtland guy does not want to give them hips up like that. to a half and he gives it up he better just try to hold on to the lead well it's gonna be 11 to 10. that's a heck of a job by porter not to get pinned there for kirtland the head of wore him out we're gonna be the end of the period here 11 to 10, Porter over Gretz. 37 24, our goal meet. Well, I told you it was going to be like this, didn't yep. I? Rootstown needs one of these first three mat last matches to clinch the duel. Kirtland needs to win and they get bonus. And this, this match right here could be it. Now we're 12 to 10. Third period. Porter for Kirtland, Gretz for Richtown. Uh-oh, now Gretz goes not, did he go over, there he's over. <laughs> you got a lot of time, there's a pin. Thirty-seven thirty. Good job by Porter. That was a heck of a match. Gretz gave it his all. Okay, now, what are we going to do here? 37-30. Okay, Kirtland sending out his uh, show. It is Shea is how it's pronounced. Goforth and Shea, spelled Cho. Now last week, Goforth got a pin, pin to, to uh, he didn't clinch it, but he put the Rovers into a, a spot to where uh, Independence had to get a pin. It's coming right down to the big guys again. No score, Cho, or Shea for, uh, Kirtland, go for, go forth to Rootstown. This is about how I had the match figured. I didn't have it. I would. I. I think I had it figured at 31-31. There's been obviously. The more penalty or uh, bonus. No points yet. Two points for Shea. I would have, I, I found out. Okay, uh, that was a big pin by Porter, putting a match 
definitely no back points given 30 seconds to go first period end of the first period. Save for Kirtland over Goforth for Rootstown. We've had an exciting one here. This has been an exciting two weeks. I'm glad to be a part of it here at Rootstown High School. I haven't heard any news from St. B. I was kind of figuring that we'd get some updates from the Tompkins from, uh, Tomp and some of the coaches. None yet. Shade to the top. Or, uh, go for it. Got a half in. He gets the turn. Go for fight. Oh boy! 37-36. Comes down to the heavyweight. Jeffers winner of this match wins the draw. We well, want it all the way down to the last match. Yep. Now Jeffers is a big he's the 220. He hit the head and arm. Oh boy. Wow! Keep cranking it. Beamer fighting hard. Five to nothing off the bat, though. Hmm? He, he hit this, that head and arm twice on Dealey last week from Independence, but they went out of bounds. Now, Deemer is actually down to 220, so these are two, two, 220s roughly. Well, uh, Jeffers, I think, weighed in at 190 something. Let me look at my sheet here. No, he weighed in at 222. Deemer at 219. He hits it again! All right. Now, nine to three is our score now. Jeffers from Rootstown over Deemer. From Kirtland. The dual rides on this match. Jeffers. Jeffers was a hero last week, avoiding the pin by Dealey from Independence. Now he comes out this week and hits two head and arm. He's up nine to three over, I have to say, the favored Deemer from Independence. And Jeffers isn't even a starter for the... Maybe he is, and they're just been giving Gophers matches. This is the second week in a row he's wrestled heavyweight. Oh, 
20 seconds until the first period. Yeah. Uh-oh. Paul Nelson, one point, Richtown. Headgear, 10 to three. I'm not rooting for anyone, folks. I'm not a rover. But I do the heart of, of Jeffer. And I saw it last week against uh, Deemer. The kid just don't quit, or not against Deemer, but against Dealey. He frustrated and ah, he hit his knee hard. Actually, it was a little bit of a throwdown, but it's part of the match. He's back. Need to walk it off. Back in there, nine seconds to go. Ten to three. First period. Jeffers has hit two head and arms on Deemer. He wasn't expecting him. I think he'll be looking for him now. He needs to, he doesn't want to take the injury, but the coach is doing the right thing. He banged his knee hard on the way down. 10 to three is our score. It comes down to this match, all you viewers out there. Our dual meet score, 37 for Richtown, 36 for Kirtland. We got Dylan Deemer for Kirtland, who did make 220 this week, versus Ronnie Jeffers from from Richtown. There's either two, actually two, both 220. Jeffers 285 with the match on the line. 10 to three, Jeffers over. Deemer, two per four minutes. He'll go down in Rootstown history in lore. Two weeks in a row, doing what he has to do to win the match. You know, last week, I really didn't think Rootstown had a chance with, with the score, and they come up with a pin, and then, then Jeffers stayed off his back to beat Independent 30. 8.36. Then they give up a pin at 195 again this week. Uh. One more point. That's two penalty points on Deemer. One more and I think the match is over. Eleven to three, minute forty-four to go. Deemer looking for a throw. Jeffers hitting that head and arm again, not this time. Eleven to five. A lot of time left in this match. Minute and a half, second period. I tell you, tell all your friends out there, especially the ones that don't think dual ma meets mean much, to watch this week and last week's finals. Look at all the team makes up, both teams. Yeah. A minute to go. Deemer trying to get a half in. Jeffers fighting it. Grabbing the headgear again. Oh. That's three penalty points. Now, I don't know. Boy, oh boy. 
Remember that guy? Yep. <laughs> okay, 13 to 5. Demer's frustrated. He gets in. Uh, there's another takedown, 13 to 7. We're going to have. Okay. 14 to 7. 40 seconds to go. Out of bounds. Hey, pan those teams right now. Pan both teams. Folks, look at this. Both teams on their feet. That's Kirtland. There's Richtown. I'm back to the match. 30 seconds to go. 14 to 7. Ronnie Jeffers. Over Dylan Deemer. Deemer gets a foot, a trip. Out of bounds. Uh, Jeffers is a fish. Ah, there he got the pin. 42 37. Well, I tell you, Jeffers has. No reason to hang his head. Deemer did what he had to do. Heck of a dull meat, folks. Uh, all right, this is going to be on again as soon as we can get it uploaded. We'll be tomorrow night at Crestwood. I want to thank Richtown High School for having us, OHSAA, for putting on these exciting dull meats. And we will... See you tomorrow night at Crestwood. Everyone, good night. Be careful if you're driving.